and under the other one. <laughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Balamba Giri Varadhari <coughs> Giri Varadhari Jai Gopi Jana Balamba Giri Varadhari Balamba Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Pajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tirabana Chari Yamuna Tirabana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Om Vishnupad Paramahansa Purudhika Charja Ashto Charita Rishi Shimad is the founder of Church of Shira Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Purdika Church of Ashto Turda Shri Shri Mother Divine Grace. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. Ananta Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai. Nama Charja Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Samaveda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 20th day of September 2021 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 15 entitled The Yoga of the Supreme Person, Texts 3-4. Narupam. Prabhu, I think it is text two. Are you sure? Uh, that's what it seems to me. Okay. Check that. Text number two on page 593. I also think that it is text two, Prabhu. All right, text two it is. We got our referees in the sky. <laughs> Adash. Chordvam. Prasvitas, Tasashaka, Guna Pravidha, Pravidha, Vishaya, Pravala, Adash, Chamulani, Anusantatani, Karmano Bandhini, I'm sorry, Karmano Bandhini, Manushya Loke, Adas Chodvam Prasutas Tasashaka Guna Pravidha Vishaya Pavala Adas Tamulan Yunusantatani Karmana Bandhi Nimanosha Loke Adas Chodvam Prasutas Tasashaka Guna Pravidha Vishaya Pravala 
Adashta mula nyunu santatani Karmana bandhi nimanusha loke Adashto advam prasatastas yashaka Guna pravidha vishaya pavala Adashta mula nyunu santatani Karmana bandhi namanusya loke. Adashtod van pasatastas yashaka. Guna pravidha vishaya pavala. Adashta mula nyunu santatani Karmana bandhi namanusya loke Adashtod van pasatastas sashaka Guna pravidha vishaya pavala Adashta mula nyunu santatani Karmano bandhi namanusya loke. Anyone in the sky? Come on, Vijay. Not there tonight. Jessica? Okay. Adas chordvam prasitas tas tishaka. Adas chordvam prasitas tas tishaka. Guna pravidha vishaya pravala. Guna pravidha vishaya pravala. Adashta mulanya nu santatani. Karmanu bandini manusha loke. Karmanu bandini manusha loke. This is what happens when you grow up in a family of Brahmins. You know, chanting from South India. Hare Krishna. Vijay, you ready? Prabhu, please, the verse. Can you chant? Oh, it's 15-2. Uh, yes, fifteen two. Uh, just a second. Um, Adash, Chordvam, Prash, Ritash, Tasya, Shaka. Adash, Chordvam, Prasitas, Tasya, Shaka. Guna, Pravrida, Vishaya, Pravala. Guna, Pravidha, Vishaya, Pravala. Adash, Cha Mulani Anu Santatani Adashta Mulani Anu Santatani Karma Nu Bandini Manusha Loke Karma Nu Bandini Manusha Loke Okay, let's move on to the word by words. Adaha downward cha and Urdvam upward Prasuta Extended tasya its shaka branches guna by the modes of material nature, pravidaha developed vishya sense objects, pravala twigs adaha downward cha and mulani roots, anusantatani extended karma to work anubandhini bound manusya loke in the world of human society. Translation: The branches of this tree extend downward and upward nourished by the three modes of material nature. The twigs are the objects of the senses. This, this tree also has roots going down, and these are bound to the fruit of actions of human society. Purport. The description of the banyan tree is further explained here. Its branches spread in all directions. In the lower parts, there are variegated manifestations of living entities, human beings, animals, horses, cows, dogs, cats, etc. These are situated on the lower parts of the branches, whereas on the upper parts are higher forms of living entities, the demigods, Gandharvas, and many other higher species of life. As a tree is nourished by water, so this tree is nourished by the three modes of material nature. Sometimes we find that a tract of land is barren for one of sufficient water, and sometimes a tract is very green. Similarly, where particular modes of material nature are proportionately greater in quantity, 
the different species of life are manifested accordingly. The twigs of the tree are considered to be the sense objects. By development of the different modes of nature, we develop different senses. And by the senses, we enjoy different varieties of sense objects. The tips of the branches are the senses, the ears, nose, eyes, etc., which are attached to the enjoyment of different sense objects. The twigs are sound, form, touch, and so on, the sense objects. <coughs> Sorry. The subsidiary, subsidiary roots are attachments and aversions, which are byproducts of different varieties of suffering and sense enjoyment. The tendencies toward piety and impiety are considered to develop from these secondary roots, which spread in all directions. The real root is from Brahma Loka, and the other roots are in the human planetary systems. After one enjoys the results of virtuous activities in the upper planetary systems, he comes down to this earth and renews his karma, or fruit of activities, for promotion. This planet of human beings is considered the field of activities. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnananjana Shalakya Chakshu Udmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. Time out. Uh oh. Someone filled up too high. If I try to drink this, it's going to end up on my shirt. So go and pour out some of it. Thanks. Okay, so Krishna is further describing the banyan tree of the material world. Now, the amazing part of this is that it has the branches going downward and the roots going up. So, as Prabhupada explains in the purport to the first verse of the chapter, uh, this means it's a reflection. Oh boy. <laughs> mm. Next time a little less. All right, we're okay. So the idea is that the material world is, we probably would call it a perverted reflection. Here we can call it a uh, reflection, which is just backwards. So what is highest in the, the, the spiritual world is lowest in this material world. And the example is given, what's the highest form of bhakti? The mood of the gopis in Vrindavan. Is this, uh, not, not even the queens in Dwarka, but the gopis in Vrindavan who are known as they were drawn out to the forest in the middle of the night by Krishna's flute, and they danced with him. He's a young girl. They're, they're young girls. He's a young boy. So this is what we would call illicit affairs in the material world, in this, in this uh, material world. And yet that's said to be the highest. Now, how is that? Well, this is called uh, parakya ras. Parakya means um, outside the bounds of ordinary morality. Parakya ras. The highest rust, the relationship of Krishna and the gopis, conjugal rust, Prabhupada would call it. And uh, the excitement, you know, the, the emotion is highest in that, even on the material side. You know, if someone is, is in married life and they get a, 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 a extra marital lover, then that's very intense for a while. Then it can be very, obviously, very degrading. But the intensity of emotion is highest there. So that's what Krishna is relishing. Because it's uh, at, the, at the highest level of God and his internal energy is enjoying, there's nothing sinful about it. But people who don't know, they think, oh, you're, you're worshiping an immoral God or something like that. So that's, a, that's a, a, a perfect example of how at the hi highest pinnacle in the real world, the spiritual world, is the, the lowest here because adulterous affairs are so destructive for society and the family and everything like that. So everything's upside down. Um, and the root of the whole thing, if you remember, is desire. The reason why we come down and, and, and take our position in this tree and have been in the tree for since time immemorial is because we desired to enjoy separately from Krishna. Desire is an, is an inescapable characteristic of the soul. We can't be desireless. The attempt to try to be, be, get liberation from birth and death by extinguishing desire inevitably fails. This is the famous Mayavadis you've heard of, the impersonalists who de deny 
that the ultimate truth, the absolute truth, is a person. This is the, what Srila Prabhupada saved us from. We sing Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachadesha Tarine. So this is Prabhupada's own verse about himself. Devotees needed a prayer to offer Prabhupada when they're ba- bowing down. So he composed it himself. And he composed it while he was in 26nd Avenue in the middle of New York City. So it refers to the Western world. You know, of course it expanded in, through the whole world. But the idea is the same. So what does this mean? By preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gora Vani Pracharine. Every word is important. You really get the benefit when you understand the meaning of every word. So Pracharine is a perfect word. It means preach, you know, to teach, to propagate. What is he propagating? Gora Vani, which means? The words of? Lord Chaitanya, the golden avatar. Gora means golden. So Gaur is short, you know, Nitai Gaur, you know, is, is Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya in short. So Gaur Vani, Vani means words. He's propagating or preaching the words, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Everything that we study is the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Even this Bhagavad Gita, how we understand the Bhagavad Gita, these purports, are coming from Prabhupada's own realization, but also from the commentary of Baladev Vijibhushan, who was a direct student of the Six Goswami, or, or of Abhishana Chakravarti, who was inspired by Narutam Das Thakur, who was directly studied under Jiva Goswami. So it's all coming down from the Six Goswamis who studied directly under Lord Chaitanya. We are on page 593. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Text 2. So the point is, is that uh, we are being delivered from what? Nirvishesha Shunyavadi. These two... Uh, misconceptions about the absolute truth. So the first one is nirvishesh, means no varieties. That the ultimate truth is the Brahman, effulgence. There's no varieties there. There's no forms, there's no emotions, there's no activities, no nothing. There's just conscious living beings. Prabhupada says it's, it's composed of countless effulgent living entities who are in this, uh, they're, they're enjoying, quote, not having to take birth again. It's a negative enjoyment. Sometimes the, the, the most intense thing that you're, you're desiring for is, is, is for the pain to stop, you know, and that's, that's your only goal in life. Some people, you know, that, that can be like that, that in the material world. So that's what this is, is that we, they, if you understand that the, the real miseries in this world are birth, old age, disease, and death, and on top of that, threefold miseries of the, caused by other living beings, oftentimes other human beings, uh, or others, uh, your own body and mind, can give you so much trouble. You know, so many people are depressed and confused and anxious, and they may be sitting in an idyllic situation, but they're in great pain internally, their own body and mind. Or you have some chronic disease, you know, body is just giving you suffering all the time. Happens all the time. And the adidaivik, those which are caused by the, the forces of nature, you know. And while we, 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 the, we human beings have affected it, they, they mix together. Is climate change just from nature? Or is it nature that's been, you know, distorted and offended by years of, of uh, greenhouse gases going up, you know, and ru- we're ruining the environment and polluting the oceans and polluting the land and polluting the air. So then it's the air blowing and it's the fire on. Is it an act of nature or is it ultimately other human beings? Anyway, one way or another, these miseries are all the, we're either suffering from them or we just suffered from them, we have PTSD, or we're uh, 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 apprehending that we might suffer from them, and we have to pay insurance, which is another misery, and so it just compounds. That's what this world is. That's why Krishna certifies it. Dukali in the in the seventh chapter. Seventh chapter? Eighth chapter. Means uh, an abode of misery, and it's temporary. In other words, even if you get a little peace and you get a little happiness, it won't last. Don't worry, you know. So that's, that's this banyan tree. The, the land of, of, of Goloka Vrindavan, the spiritual world, is full of bliss, eternal life, full knowledge. And this world is just the opposite, full of misery, temporary, and, and uh, what was the other one? Full of misery, temporary, and ignorance. So uh, here uh, Krishna is describing more details about this uh, tree of the material world. And the various parts of it represent our environment. The twigs are the uh, objects of the senses, right? And uh, 
forms of living in these dem the demigods they have different places on this tree the, the higher beings are enjoying a, a better part of the tree you know there's more uh, facility for sense gratification they live a longer time but it's all within the tree even if you go to Brahmaloka you still have to die eventually it's not permanent or Indra Loka Krishna this directly describes Tetam Bhuktva Swargalokam Vishalam in this Swargaloka, this heavenly planet, you enjoy godly delights for a long, long time. But then chine punye, it's all dependent on your virtuous activities in this world. It's all like the law of karma. If you perform the right sacrifices and you don't commit any sin and you worship the right gods, then you can, properly, then you can go to the heavenly planets. You're, you're accumulating punya. It's, it's, uh, punya is the pious credits, almost like credit in the bank. And you go up, and you can enjoy godly delights. Vishala means we can't even imagine. You know, beautiful Nanda Nanda gardens, the dancing ladies, the music is celestial, the food, oh, and you know, you can imagine everything, <laughs> the sounds, the sights, the states, the smells. But it's temporary. When your bias credit runs out, chine punye, martyr lokam bishanti, you come down to this world of death. Christian doesn't mince any words in the <laughs> martyr lokam bishanti. Uh, therefore, he says, what's the point? Evam chihi dhamma manu papanna gataktam kama kama labante. Kama kama means you're trying to, uh, to, to fulfill your material desires. Maybe in a more refined way than on this wretched planet, but uh, it's still the same category. So you don't make any progress. You get diverted. The mission of life, not just human life, but life of the living entity, is to get back, back home, back to where we left for an actual eternal life of bliss and knowledge. So we're, we're caught in this tree and we're, we're trying to solve the problem by going to another twig, another branch. Maybe if I get to that branch, it'll be all right. But, it's, but we, we have to cut down the whole tree and that's what the next couple of verses are about. Okay. Any, other, any questions, comments? Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, the quote from the translation is, quote, this tree also has roots going down and these are bound to the fruitive actions of human society end quote right. so Prabhu uh, you know better than me that fruitive actions are not conducive in relation to helping us make spiritual advancement just the opposite but, uh, what just the opposite far from being conducive they tie us to this world but go ahead I, I get you yes just. Yes, and you uh, and you also know better than me that the the, the soul is always active. Uh -huh. So um, uh, if if inaction is not the best option, my question is: instead of fruitive actions, what kind of actions should I adopt in relation to making spiritual advancement? Uh <laughs> about the actions of devotional service. Is, that, is this a trick question? <laughs> the point is that fruit of actions means self-centered actions, that you're trying to satisfy your own senses, your own mind. These are, these are we, we're very familiar with these. <laughs> it's not a mystery. So each of these fruit of actions binds you to this world. It's all, it's all very scientific. When you perform a fruit of action, okay, you go to the store, you buy, let's, let's make it simple, peanut butter and strawberry jam. I used to live on that, you know, uh, when I was a kid. And, uh, I, you know, my mother would prepare it for me at home, you know. And so that's, that's a food of action. I want something. I'm hungry for a certain type of food. I go buy it. I eat it. You see? But what does that do? That plants a desire seed in your mind. If, you had, if it was pleasant, then it, okay, suppose it's pleasant then you want to do it again. And so that's what we call a vidya grunti, a vidya grunta, a singular. It's a certain knot in the heart that's, that's binding you to this world. You've got in your mind now the impression of enjoying this peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and you want to do it again and again when you get hungry. That's part of the way in which you're satisfied. That's not the only way. There's other things that you may eat. So these, these are all fruit of actions. That's the only kind we perform without, unless there's devotional service. 
The, imp the impetus is coming from our false ego and our identification with the body and the, imp and the stimuli that we're getting from the senses. There's painful stimuli, but there's also pleasurable stimuli. And so when we pursue those, and this is, norm this is what we call normal life in this world. But, it's, but it's, it's not healthy for the soul. The soul is bound up to this material body, which is the vehicle for enjoyment and also for suffering. And so at a certain point, that, that there's no more, you know, you go to the store, there's no more Skippy peanut butter. Oh, you know, I can't enjoy. Now, you, now you're in suffering. Yeah. And so, you know, and so that's just minor. Then there must maybe come a point where you can't even eat, you know, that anymore, where you, you know, you're in the hospital or whatever. So, so the point is, is that the fruit of activity is binding to this world. And Prabhupada says the pleasure you enjoy from it is actually the worst enemy of the soul. That pleasure keeps, makes you think, oh, there's a way of enjoying in this world. But that enjoyment is a very suffer source of your pain. I've quoted this verse a million times. So Krishna is telling Arjun that the, uh, the pleasures that accrue from the senses touching the sense objects, which is what we're talking about here in this banyan tree, uh, are the sources of suffering. They have a beginning and an end, O oh Arjun, and the wise do not delight in them. So this brings up the whole point of abnegation, of austerity, of renunciation, not for its own self, but for purification. The whole idea of, of that, and Krishna explains in the previous verse, the realized souls are not attached to this sense, uh, uh, sense satisfaction of the senses, contacting the senses. But then, then you say, well, you guys are into like that anyway. I've seen you take prasadam, you look at your singing music, beautiful fragrances, the beauty of the deities. You're using your senses. Yes, but it's not fruit of. The real consciousness of the devotees should be, oh, how beautiful are the deities, you appreciate them and you offer prayers, and you offer homage, and you bow down, and you dress them so nicely for their pleasure, for the pleasure of the spiritual master, for the pleasure of the devotees. Not for your pleasure. Your, your, we're, we're into the highest pleasure. We want to be the biggest enjoyers. But we know that real enjoyment comes from giving enjoyment to Krishna in, in, a, in a mood of love and devotion. That's actual enjoyment. And we can see that even in the material world where the mother is, is peaceful and happy when she feeds the kid nicely and, and, and she you know, uh, makes sure he's healthy, he or she is healthy and the child is dependent and the child smiles with that half smile without any teeth, then the mother's day is made. For a week she can live on that. <laughs> that's that's a, a, a little reflection of the uh, spiritual pleasure. So when we, when we can take pleasure in glorifying Krishna and in, uh, for, he's enjoying that. Otherwise, we wouldn't find it pleasurable. That's the, that's the, that's the spiritual happiness we want to try to get back to. So Krishna says, Bayas Varsha Asaktam Vindhyabhan Yatsukam. He's enjoying the pleasure within, the, the yogi he's talking about. That pleasure within is in the heart. Krishna's in the heart. You're contacting him when you glorify him, when you, when you do some nice devotional service. What is it that you come back for? There's some pleasure, the spiritual pleasure, even in our neophyte state. And that's Lord Chaitanya's great gift, that if you come into the kirtan and you start chanting and you get drawn into it, there's, there's, there's a real pleasure there. You don't know where it's coming from, but it's, it's different from sense gratification, you know? And it's cheap. I mean, it's like for free. Did anyone pay five ninety nine to get in here? No. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's free. There's the deities yeah. over here. But actually, ultimately, Krishna wants everything. You know? In other words, you, you really uh, uh, get to the point of, of firm devotional service, and you never want to get tempted to go back when you, you give everything. And you experience at every moment the pleasure of contact with Krishna and His presence, which He really is present at every moment. So he, that means the Holy Name is present at every moment. Is there ever a point that said, Saul, stop chanting Hare Krishna and go wash the dishes? No, everyone says, can you please do the pots, Prabhu? It's understood why you do it. You can chant, you know. <laughs> and so the chanting and the serving at the same time uh, gives you real transcendental pleasure. And you're getting free from this banyan tree. That's the best I can do, Vijay. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, again, wonderful answer to my question. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> we have a question from Dimitri Das Prabhu. 
Um, demigods can experience um, pleasures from intoxication, and uh, they have no side effects for it. I is that correct? Uh, there's a side effect. It may not be what we have here, which is so gross and you know, f so grossly physical. But that's not part of their devotional service. You know, they're en they're enjoying the f the finer intoxications and you know the sex life up there. But they don't go back to guided from, from that. Yeah. You know, they'll eventually, that'll eventually wear, it's temporary, even though it may last a long, much longer time. And so they have to come back down here again. And, you know, this, this, this plane is actually better than the heavenly planets. Because in the heavenly planets, for devotees, because, because it wants to be, a, someone wants to be a devotee. Because in the heavenly planets, you can easily get bewildered by all of the heavenly delights. You see what I'm saying? So you're, it's, you're in a better situation to be in, a, be in a situation like this where it's possible to perform devotional service, but you don't have to go very far and even just remember your own life to see, yeah, this is not a place of enjoyment. I really want to get out of here. The demigods are not so eager to get out of there because they're enjoying godly delights. So, so that's why they're known as Sakama devotees. They're devotees, but there's a big element of, of uh, material desire mixed in. Mixed, you know. So, so therefore, Prabhupada said, uh, Hari Das Thakur is in a better position than Lord Brahma. He's more advanced, even than Lord Brahma. Of course, then they say, well, he's actually uh, Brahma Hari Das, you know, the manifestation. But the, but the point is that that position of being absolutely uh, just wanting to remember Krishna, glorify him, be completely dependent on him, and, and calling out with great uh, urgency, that's more available here than it is on Indoloka. So you were, you're perfectly situated. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Bol, Danavari. Yeah, just um, uh, thank you uh, for the nice class. My question is related to the same thing what uh, Dimitri Prabhu asked. Um, so there is, you said is little bit bhakti, they are bhaktas in uh, demigods, they they got such a higher post, and I'm sh they must have done something very much more than like on Ruthu Loka, or um, at least gen generally in Kaliuga. I mean, much more better than Kaliuga. Uh, okay, know, they've been up there for a long time. Yeah, maybe they did something in Satya Yuga. Go ahead. So, okay. So that my question is, even though they have a higher post, God gave uh, Krishna gave them very very big big thing uh, to manage and all and still they don't have bhakti and we are better i mean they are better uh, not as i have always some um, doubt they, they have bhakti but 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 just think of indra what his okay. problem is he's got a very responsible post right managing the weather mm -hmm. and you know and, yeah. and uh doing all kinds of things like that but uh his soul, his senses, I mean, it's not an accident that his name is Indra. It's close to Indriya, which means senses, right? <laughs> and we know, his, you know he's got a lot of eyes on his, uh, on his body. You know why. You may not know why. But it's uh, because he was uncontrolled. And so, and we know the Govardhan Leela, and he stole Pritu's horse, uh, the hundredth horse, right? And the, and the horse, horse satisfied. Uh, sat we, we read about that, you know. Because he goes, oh, they're going to take my position. So, so Indra has a tendency to uh, deviate, let's say, from pure devotion, although he's a responsible devotee. So there's a mix there. It's a mixture. What I'm saying is, uh, this is supported in the Shastra. It's not just being here. It's being here at this time, in this Kali Yuga, in the very Kali Yuga where Lord Chaitanya appeared. I always quote this verse. It's in the 11th Kano. Kaling sabhaji antyaya guna gyasada bhaginaha Yatra Sankirtane Naiva Sarva Swarto Bilabhyate. So those who are really knowledgeable, the Aryans and those who know the value of things, they worship this Kali Yuga. This Kali Yuga. Because here in this Kali Yuga, Yatra Sankirtane Naiva, just by Sankirtan, by congregational chanting of the holy name of Krishna, it takes you about, if you're smart, maybe 15 seconds to memorize the mantra. And then if you say, you just chant it, you know, along with us, I'll chant, you chant, you chant, I'll, I'll hear, you chant, like, and then, you, you, then you've got the process down, right? <laughs> and then you just observe that, 
that's the, that's the portal, and that, that's the essence, and that's also the, the means and the goal. The means means that it, uh, it opens up your, your, your heart and it, your interest in reading Bhagavad Gita and associated with devotees and learning more about devotion and, and becoming a serious devotee. But, but the point is, you're here in this Kali Yuga. Who, who, who would not, you know, just walking out the door, realize we need shelter, right? There was a band that, of devotees at very back of, uh, what, what do they call them? New Age, not New Age, I forget. But they, they were already vegans, you know, and they were practicing principles, and they, they, many of them became devotees. Raghunath, Raghunath the, 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 uh, the famous yogi who preaches out of New York now, he visited here. I knew him when he was a bhakta. And uh, so th the idea is that, uh, give me shelter, right? I need shelter. Chena, to be as humble as a blade of grass and tolerant as a tree, and to always think that, uh, g give others honor and have no honor for oneself, and to call, uh, call out Krishna's name incessantly. That you, you become qualified. Because you need that protection. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. It's such a dangerous place. And if you, if you call out to Krishna that way and you're focused, then Krishna in the heart, then you quickly make advancement. And how, what's the advancement? The, the, the so-called pleasures of this world become very detestable. You see, oh, I'm saved from that. This was an entanglement some drug or some crazy relationship, whatever it is. You know, I'm, I'm saved from that now. Now I'm, I'm worshiping Krishna, I'm hanging out with these people. So that, that happens in, in this, this Kali Yuga especially. Not up on, in, in Viloka. I'm doing okay. You know, it's not such a bad place. You know, I think I can stay. That's not... Yeah, we worship Krishna, you know, but... So, so that's, the, that's the difference. This is a, we're, we're very fortunate that it's not so nice here. It's not heavenly, but it's good enough that we can have the, the process of bhakti. I want to go on and read the next one. Thank okay. you so much. Hare Krishna. Prabhu. Okay, I'll say you say. Narupamasye hetato palabhyate Nanto na chadi na chasampratishta Ashvatamenang suvarudha mulam Asanga Shastrena Dridhena Chitba Tatak Padang Tat Padimagi Tavyam Yasmin Gatana Navartanti Buyaha Tame Bachadyam Purusham Prapadye Yatak Praviti Pasatapurani the real form of this tree cannot be perceived in this world. No one can understand where it ends, where it begins, or where its foundations are. Oh, excuse me, or where its foundation is. But with determination, one must cut down this strongly rooted tree with the weapon of detachment. Thereafter, one must seek that place from which, having gone, one never returns, and there surrender to that supreme personality of Godhead, from whom everything has uh, began and from whom everything has extended since time immemorial. Okay, we have this wonderful <laughs> ventilation system here, but sometimes it gets a little cool. And I'm going to... It's, it, we're almost at autumn, you know. This has been the coolest summer that I have experienced here in 32 years. <laughs> You've been here a long time. It's been, did we hit 90? This, I don't think we did. <laughs> we're, we're very fortunate. The rest of the country is burning up. Okay, so that's the uh, translation purport. It is now clearly stated that the real form of this human of this banyan tree cannot be understood in this material world, since the root is upwards. The extension of the real tree is at the other end. When entangled with the material expansions of the tree, one cannot see how far the tree extends, nor can one see the beginning of this tree. Yet one has to find out the cause. Quote. I am the son of my father. My father is the son of such and such a person, etc. By searching in this way, one comes to Brahma, who is generated by the Garbhodakashai Vishnu. Finally, in this way, when one reaches the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that is the end of research work. One has to search out that origin of this tree, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, through the association of persons who are in knowledge of that Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then, by understanding, one becomes gradually detached from this false reflection of reality, 
and by knowledge one can cut off the connection and actually become situated in the real tree. The word asanga is very important in this connection. That's uh, in the, the end of the first verse, the last, the fourth line. Uh, because the attachment for sense enjoyment and lording it over the material nature is very strong. Therefore, one must learn detachment by discussion of spiritual science based on authoritative scriptures, and one must hear from persons who are actually in knowledge. As a result of such discussion in the association of devotees, one comes to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then the first thing one must do is surrender to Him. The description of that place whence having gone one never returns to this false reflected tree is given here. <coughs> The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, is the original root from whom everything has emanated. To gain the favor of that Personality of Godhead, one has only to surrender, and this is a result of performing devotional service by hearing, chanting, etc. He is the cause of the extension of the material world. This has already been explained by the Lord Himself. Aham sarvasya prabhavaha, I am the origin of everything. Therefore, to get out of the entanglement of the strong banyan tree of material life, one must surrender to Krishna. As soon as one surrenders unto Krishna, one becomes detached automatically from this material extension. So, the very name Krishna is uh, composed of two syllables, Krish and Na. Uh, there's a verse, Krishi uh, Bhuvachakak Sabdo, Nascenirviti Vachaka. Tayo Param Brahma Krishna Chabidiyate. Tayo Aikyam Param Brahma Krishna Chabidiyate. This ex explains the word Krishna. Very important. So, Krish means to attract. There's the word Karshiti, uh, which is in the Bhagavad, uh, Bhagavad Gita also. Karshiti means to pull or attract. So, Krishna is all attractive. And this Krish is, uh, is the uh, word that des describes or indicates his all-attractive nature. And Nash, or Na, uh, Na is a word that means the uh, ultimate happiness or bliss. So you add, add them together and what do you get? Krishna, uh, which is the supreme Brahman, Param Brahma. So all-attractive and the abode of un infinite bliss. So when we surrender to Krishna, usually that, be, that begins, it's rare that someone just completely surrenders out of the blue. You have to <laughs> investigate, chant the holy name. So when you chant Hare Krishna, you're actually associating with Krishna. And the more attention you're putting on and the more care that you give, uh, the more you're experiencing the power of that name. And what is Krishna doing? He's attracting you to him. And he's giving you a certain amount of bliss, a little taste of the happiness of, of devotional service. And then, of course, the natural thing, the mind wanders, you, you know, you're a million, million miles away, but then you go and you do your bhakti, and you, ch you chant for, you know, your two rounds or whatever it is. And, and then you get curious, what's this all about? You may come and associate with devotees, have an akirtan, prasadam, the books, the whole experience, and all of that is Krishna, different manifestations of Krishna in his all-attractive form. And so, the cultivation of the, of, the, of the intelligence is all important too, because the, 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 if it's just on an emotional level, then it can easily be diverted. But when your faith is founded on some knowledge that you accrued, oh, now I understand why this is working, and you're more, and, and more likely to continue the process. Because it is, it is difficult. That's why there's this, this, this tapasya. Where in, in a few days we'll be reading the first instruction of Rishabdev, which is exactly related to what we're talking to here. Asanga Shastrena, the weapon of detachment. We have, I, talk, I talked about the knots in the heart, but all the sense gratification, the plants, desire, seeds, these serve as, as knots or ropes that tie us here. That's the gunas, the three gunas, that's also involved. So, shastrena, you can't, you can't get out of the tree by climbing out of it, going from one branch to another. It doesn't work that way. You have to cut down the root of the tree, which is desire, material desire. Originally, our desire is all spiritual. But when we turn away from Krishna, we become absorbed in this world of the modes of nature. It becomes material. It becomes, it, it, it becomes a binding force to this, this world. That's Maya's uh, uh, thankless task, Prabhupada said, Maya, to keep us bound here until we're ready to go back. 
So that, that Asanga Shastrina, how do we develop that Asanga Shastrina? This is same, the same thing as uh, the, the sword of detachment that is described in the, uh, in the second chapter, first canto. Yadunu yasina yukta karma grunti nabandhanam chindanti. Chindanti means to cut. By hearing about Krishna, chanting about Krishna, reading, all having experiences of serving Krishna, then, and, and making the effort to remember and to think of Krishna, that's all the ver- developing the sword of remembrance by which we can cut the attachments to this world. And so it also ser- serves as the, as the sword of detachment. And then, tatakpadam, we have to search out that person, find out where everything came from, and surrender. Now the surrender is multifold. There's, there's, there's six uh, elements to it. Uh, as, uh, what is it? Anukulyena sankalpa pratikulyasa varjanam rakshishatiti vishra so gopta deva nanang tata atmanak shape the karpane shad vadashadanagati shad means six. So the first thing is you have to uh, accept those things which are favorable to devotional service. I'm going to read this, not that. I'm going to go here, not there. You know, so there's always a positive and negative. Accept those things favorable and reject those things unfavorable. This is this is uh, universal. If you want to progress on any path, you want to take a course in college, you want to learn to play a musical instrument, become an athlete, anything. There's a dharma that's been worked out before. You find a, uh, a coach or, or a, a teacher, and there's a book, and there are others who have gone f- ahead and can can encourage you and show you the way. Right? It's a universal process, even on the material level. So when you when you when you're determined because you, you've uh, gotten the idea of the goal or you've experienced a little of it and you, you like the people who are doing it, whatever reason impels you, then you have to uh, be determined because we're so habituated, probably because we're conditioned. We're conditioned to enjoy in this way, to think in this way, and that, that's kept us bound up. So we have to change our whole lifestyle and our uh, activities. And so that's part of what is uh, of surrender. Uh, what is it? Uh, One has to uh, uh, surrender. And so that surrender will be described in the next verse, which I don't think we have time. We'll save that one for tomorrow. The process of surrender in text 5. Jita Sangha Dosha. By this surrender, you conquer over all the faults that have come from bad association in previous life. You can boil down the process of devotional service completely to association. We've been associating with Maya Devi, the objects of the senses, others who are encouraging on this since time immemorial in different species of life. When we lose the human life, we got to wait till we get back up there. You know, we don't, put, we don't incur any sin but we, we simply suffer because our intelligence is covered and we work according to instinct. But then eventually we come to the human form. And so what do you, what, who and what we associate with determines our consciousness. And, that, and that's usually, you know, it's also determined by what, where we're born and the education. But if we come in contact with this knowledge and we make a decision, no, I want to associate with this sound and with this person and with this experience, then you can actually cultivate devotional service. That's the meaning of uh, surrender. It means that, you, that you, you look to the higher authority for the impetus of what you're going to do in, in every aspect of your life. That's what surrender is. And, and ultimately, that's success when you're completely surrendered to Krishna. Then you're experiencing at every moment the waves of ha- real happiness. That's actually what happens. Any discussion on this point? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, Vijay. We have a local question here. Yes. Hi, Krishna. Um, <clears throat> can one fully surrender without becoming a monk in a monastery? Well, uh, yes, but it's more difficult. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it, it's it'd be harder out there because there's all these temptations yeah. everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> the whole th- th- that's why we call it an ashram. It's like a shelter, a refuge. You know, where, where, where you'll find um, the best uh, association to help you in the path. Because we're like, we're like uh, patients in a hospital. You know, we, we're, we're trying to be cured of the material disease. Prabhu would point out, this body itself is a disease. You can only be so healthy, you know. I mean, we should keep ourselves healthy. 
But the body itself is a disease of the soul because it restricts our consciousness and restricts our experience and, and makes, them, makes us think we're something we're not. We're not the body. And we never were. We never will be. So therefore, the association that comes from a, 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 of this, and Prabhupada struggled so hard to set up places just like this all over the world. Uh, it is possible to advance uh, on one's own if one is really determined. But uh, it, it helps, uh, you know, how much time do we really have? Not just, you know, with our lifetime, but th that there's actually going to be water and electricity and there aren't going to be mobs running down the street, you know. I mean, things are getting pretty hairy out there. So every, every moment counts. And we should, we should try to, you know, uh, uh, arrange our life in such a way that we're progressing as fast as possible. Which means giving up as many things as possible that are obvious impediments and, it, and taking on as much as possible that's uh, auspicious. So some of the people in the room, you know, are, uh, are people who have lived here, lived here, live here and have making that, made that commitment. Uh, I was fortunate many years ago. It wasn't easy. You know, I went through a period where I was at home and I was chanting. I, I was lucky. I was, had a job and I was doing yoga and I was living alone. And I was following the principles even unknowingly. I didn't know about it, but I was doing it. Yeah. So... Uh, you know, the, therefore, the you know the, the chanting and the reading and the, so it had a big, a big effect on me, and I I decided well this is really where I should be, and so that was back in 1973, and I never thought I made a mistake by doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the best decision I made. So it is is possible to to advance, but you you it's better if you can you know be in association all the time. So so if you do want to advance as fast as possible, right? I, I read, I chant, I come here as often as possible, you know, and f try to follow the four things as best as possible. Right? I'm not all the way, every day, 16 rounds and all that, but I'm, I'm trying, you know, my best in all aspects. Well, but great. I find it really hard being out there. I think it would be easier in here, but I just want to know that, you know, all I can do is do my best to surrender over time more and more this, 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 yes that, that you're doing the right thing the, the, the thing is you, you'll get at a certain point you may get frustrated because it's, hard, it's harder to advance and you, and you can feel that you know you, you may want to say well let me, okay I've got a this happened to me I had a, a week's vacation and I spent it just doing Hare Krishna stuff you know and then, and then I prayed to, to, to I did a big picture of the super soul on the wall I would chant Hare Krishna and I said Please, you know, give me, help me go to the next step. And then a few days later, there was an ad on the, on the, on the, the I was working in a hospital for over a year, and there was an ad for a night job, you know, in a hospital that was much closer. I said, oh, this is great. I'll just get the night shift, and then during the day, I can do more yoga, you know, and chant Mahari Krishna every day, you know. So I quit that job and got a good recommendation. I got the job in the uh, other hospital. Uh, but then... Uh, it was like, you know, I was trained the first week, and then the second week I was on my own. It was a much smaller hospital. There was hardly anything to do. All the patients were sleeping. So, and I, would, I, had, I had been, you know, uh, uh, eating raw food for a, ye for a year, you know, so I was all, and practicing yoga and chanting Hare Krishna a lot. And so I was kind of sensitized, and I sensed there were a lot of ghosts. You know, in hospitals people die. I mean, I didn't see them, but I just didn't feel right and easy, and I said, I better just join the temple. You know, and then I realized that Krishna made that arrangement. I felt that he had given me that other job just so I'd be so frustrated. I said, oh, forget it. I'm just going to join Tamil. <laughs> so you may find that that happens. If you really sincerely chant, at a certain point you say, yeah, I want to break through. You know, what's the next step? And yeah, let me do this. And you think you're going this way, but Krishna takes you that way. But then, you, you know, then you're very fortunate. Thank you. Okay. We better adjourn. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bo. Sorry, Vijay. We ran out of time. No problem, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Wonderful class. What about spectacular? Wonderful is like a C. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, I don't know what to say now. <laughs> okay, you want it? You want spectacular? Spectacular cla class? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>